there are um, entire families swimming in that lake and I'm pretty sure it's about five degrees. Wetsuit or no wetsuit? Yeah. Right, I'm gonna go this way because, um, well, there's loads of screaming kids up there. And I mean, it might be partly because they're swimming in water that's about four degrees. And, uh, well, it might just be because they're excited to be on the summer holidays. But either way, I'm not the biggest fan of constant shrieking. So, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna move away from it. Ow! Ow! Plants stabbing me. I can't remember when I last filled this up. I don't think it was this week, so enough of that. Right, away from the screaming kids, which is wonderful because part of the reason I've come out today is that I've spent too long over the past few days editing in front of my computer and I gave myself a headache. So yesterday I tried to solve that by carrying on working and editing in front of a computer, but doing it in bed, uh, which didn't really help the headache and also gave me a crick neck. So I thought today I definitely needed to be out. Plus the fact the weather's good for once and, uh, and summer's coming to an end. So I thought I'd best get out and, uh, and get as many summery photos as humanly possible before the summer comes to an end. I say before the summer comes to an end, today is the first day that's looked anything like summer for about two months. But it's not just coming to the end of summer, it's also coming to the end of my time living here in Wales. I'm only going down the road to Manchester. It's not really that far away, but it's not gonna be as convenient to get out into the North Wales mountains and see the lakes and the greenery and the countryside and the wind as it has been in the last few months so i thought i'd take the opportunity to get out and uh i mean i've just started recording so obviously this is when it gets really windy i am not going inside to finish this video no 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 anyway the reason for the title of this video is because in the past few videos i've had comments asking me why I haven't really focused on my photography uh, on the concepts that I produce in my videos and why it's broadly just a photography channel rather than James's photography channel. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons for that to be honest. First, when I started this channel earlier this year, I did try and do a couple of videos about concepts that I was producing. Uh, I think Beach Ball and Lighthouse maybe I did videos about, but I found it really, really time intensive and that's partly because it takes a lot of effort to create one of those images and to be concentrating on what I need to make those images and then to throw a video on top of that when you don't really know how to make videos in the first place, I found that really tough. I should be able to do it more in future for a couple of reasons. A, I sort of know how to make videos now and B, I'm gonna be moving to a city in a couple of months time and I've always found myself to be much more productive in cities. I don't really know why, but I found generally in cities that I'm able to get many, many more photos and therefore I come up with more ideas and I'm able to edit faster because I've got more photos and options to work with. So that should help. And the second reason is that this is my first full year working as a full-time photographer so if you know of my work and my kind of concepts if not you can see them on my website below basically I've done those as personal projects for the past four or five years this year has been the first time where full-time I'm doing that for brands as well so brands will come to me and they'll say James we really like your stuff can you do a similar sort of thing for us here's the brief here's the message we want to send to people what would you do? We'll then go through a series of brainstorms. I'll come up with a plan that I think can work for the money uh, and then I'll produce them. And hopefully they like them. They'll give me some coins that I can buy food with. Economics. But doing those jobs has meant that I've actually had much less time to do personal projects than I anticipated. And therefore, because I haven't been doing as many personal projects, I've not been filming personal projects. So hopefully that'll change going forward because now I sort of know how to do videos and I'll be in a city and more productive. And, uh, and yeah, I'll be able to show you more of how I do what I do and why I do what I do and hopefully you'll like what I do. If you're really interested in it, you can buy prints and if you're really, really interested in it, you can hire me. Uh, but whichever of those you do, thanks very much. I've moved to the woods. 
Oh, nearly fell over then. The reason I moved is because I found a lovely photo uh, in the trees. Fairly straightforward to be honest. It's, it's just trees, but I don't know if I've explained my sort of creative process all that much before. I think I might have mentioned it maybe when when we're in New Zealand. But if I did, I'll have mentioned something along the lines of the fact that 50% of the time, roughly, when I'm getting photos for the sort of concepts that you see on my website, I'm basically taking the photos when I've already had the idea. So I've had an idea, and then I've worked out where I've needed to go location-wise to get the shots that I need to bring that idea to life. The other half of the time, I've made those photos from images that I've already got in my archive that I've got previously not knowing what to do with them. And today is a good example of the latter process. So today I'm just out taking photos, seeing what I see, and hopefully at some point in the future, um, the photos that I get today will become useful. So they'll either be useful for personal projects or maybe even brand projects where maybe the budget is not big enough for me to go and do bespoke shoots for each photo. Um, I can just use photos that I've already got in my archive. The problem is, is that it's not a particularly straightforward process when I'm trying to get photos for an idea that I'm yet to have. Because even though I know that in the future the chances are I'll need an image of woods shot at this kind of angle, it doesn't mean that I can just snap one photo and then walk away and be done with it. Uh, you need to kind of put some process and thought into it to maximise your options. So typically what I do is a few different things. The first thing I'll do is close out the aperture a bit to sort of between f8 and f11 and that's because I don't know what I'm going to want to be focused on in these future ideas that I have. Uh, and if I shoot between f8 and f11, then in most circumstances, I'll have a shot where the thing I want to be in focus will be in focus. Pretty easy to get in focus things out of focus in Photoshop. It's not so easy to get out of focus things in focus. In fact, it's impossible. So I always want to make sure that I've got things in focus that I can take out of focus later in post-processing. So the next thing is focal length. Same thing as aperture, I don't really know what sort of focal length I'm going to want to be at. And therefore I'm going to shoot at four different focal lengths. And that's 24 mil, 35 mil, 50 mil, and 70 mil. And that's because typically I use a 24 to 70 and they're the focal lengths that are marked on the lens. And broadly speaking, I can make sure that in future I've got something that's fairly usable at one of each of those focal lengths. Uh, another consideration is exposure. So typically I'll bracket for three or five shots for each of the photos at different focal lengths for this. And that's because even though I can raise and lower the exposure in post, um, I don't want to introduce noise or anything unnecessarily. So it's not going to take me all that long to bracket and therefore I might as well. So. I'll have three to five different shots at different exposures for each of the focal lengths with this specific shot. Uh, and the last couple, which don't really apply to this situation but can complicate the process a little bit, is that sometimes I'll want to shoot the same photo but at different heights. Um, so I'll have to raise and lower the tripod legs and work on sort of three to five different heights and go through that same process for all of those different heights. Um, and that's because, again, I, I don't know what height I'm going to want to shoot at. And then the last thing, again, not really applicable here, but can be applicable in some situations, usually when I'm adjusting the height, is I want to adjust the perspective as well. So I might need to shoot with the camera pointed slightly down and then level and then slightly up or maybe a couple of different levels up. Again, just in case I don't know what I'm going to use the photo for uh, and to give myself the maximum number of options. Particularly if I'm in a spot that I know is going to be quite a pain to get to in the future and I'm there and I might as well take the photo. So yeah, the process of collecting photos before I know what I'm going to do with them isn't sadly just a case of rocking up somewhere and taking a snapshot. It's, um, it's a case of setting up a tripod, usually spending 20 minutes somewhere and collecting anywhere between 30 and 100 shots so yeah a bit of a faff the other thing that i nearly completely forgot to mention that um that i really shouldn't have because it's one of the most important things as you can see there i'm set up landscape but of course i go through the whole process again in portrait so yeah fun process but it does mean that i don't rush through my work and it means that i only really stop uh, in a location when i'm pretty sure that that Oh, got something in my eye. Yeah, I only really stop in places that I'm convinced that I can get a decent shot in that might be useful in the future because otherwise I'll just be snapping away um, on like really weird pointless things and none of them will be useful in the future because they might be like the wrong focal length or they might not be in focus or they might be the wrong perspective, they might have been taken at the wrong height, they might not be the right orientation. So yeah, I have to think about all those things for basically what is quite a boring photo. If you've watched a lot of my videos and the ones that I've shown sort of images in, you might have noticed that they're a bit on the sort of boring side compositionally. And that's because I'm looking for quite boring compositions because the more interesting and intricate the composition I take in one shot, 
the harder generally it can be to use in a composite. So here for example I've got a shot of just loads of trees uh, but it's uniform across the frame which means that generally speaking it'll be much easier to use in a composite than if I just had a few trees dotted about um, and yeah don't really know how I was going to explain that but hopefully it'll make sense. Yeah so that's how I shoot if you're still watching I'm, I'm quite impressed. Also, a couple of other things I forgot to mention that means more photos is that generally I'll try and avoid shooting on a day like this with a sort of bright light coming through in direct sunshine because if there's an obvious direction of light then it cuts my options again um, when it comes to editing and post. Often I quite like to shoot this sort of thing when it's dull and overcast because it gives me a lot more options when it comes to editing in Photoshop because I can add shadows and light and things much easier than I can take it away. But on days like today when I'm ignoring my own rules, what I will do is take all those photos that I spoke about before, but I'll then put a polarizer on and do it all again, just in case the polarized ones work better. I know, I know, it's not, it's not exactly a composition to write home about, but one day that image could be the building block, the first building block of me creating a concept that is a really nice photo or not. I mean, that's the reality with some of these things is that I spend ages doing them or collecting the assets and uh, and then they never come to fruition but you got to be in it to win it you uh you see that boat there um yeah i just i just watched them set off from this little jetty area here and uh, there's a dog on that boat and it was biting it quite hard and neither of the people on the boat noticed the boat's inflatable I mean, it, it seems all right at the moment, but I don't know whether to stay and make sure that they don't sink. I've got quite a lot to do though, so. No, I'm gonna go home.